Khumbu, land of the Sherpas, where every step is a journey of awe, and every breath a testament to the indomitable spirit of life in the Himalayas. To witness the way of life of the Sherpas and their remarkable relationship with these formidable mountains is a spiritual undertaking as much as it is a physical one. The ancestral wisdom and profound respect for nature have shaped a unique way of life where every step is taken with both purpose and humility. From breathing treacherous terrains to embracing the solitude of the high altitude wilderness, Sherpas face extraordinary challenges daily. In recent decades, changing weather patterns due to climate change have made life even more difficult here. Yet, amidst these trials, we will find a warmth and generosity that resonates within every Sherpa heart. <laughs> But it is also these very hardships that provide the most valuable lessons. A gift from nature's most rugged form. The land of Sherpas is an array of landscapes that is the Himalayas. Which brings with it sites that will simply leave any bystander wonderstruck. Venture with us as we travel to the top of the world, cross a mountain pass, and explore the highest freshwater lake system in the world. And along the way, meet people who make Kumbu more than just a natural wonder. Dubbed as the most dangerous airport in the world. This is Lukla Airport. It is also the gateway for anyone who wants to climb many of the highest peaks in the world, including Everest. This is where the Sherpas exhibit their superhuman traits and show us why there is no climbing Everest without them.
the fixed climbing lines. Set up camp. Carry and cook food. And make high altitude rescues when necessary. Risking their own life in the process. This is the village of Dingboche, the last proper village to acclimatize before making your way to Everest. It takes five days of walking to reach here from Lukla. To get here, one has to cross the high hills of Sulu, which, along with the Khumbu region, makes up Nepal's Sulu Khumbu district. In absence of motorable roads, mules carry most of the loads in the hills along with people. But life in Solu is very different from life in Khumbu. Up in Khumbu, mules can barely survive. Yaks are the trucks of the Himalayas. Strong, sturdy and built for life in the mountains. The five-day walk from Lukla to Dingboche is not only a physical adventure, but also a cultural immersion, allowing trekkers to gain a deeper appreciation for the traditions, landscapes, and communities that make this region so extraordinary. For trekkers, the Everest Base Camp is one of the most popular hiking destinations. But unlike for mountaineers who come to climb Everest, the base camp is optional for trekkers. There are other trails in the region with even more stunning scenery than the Everest Base Camp Trail. The way to Chola Pass is one such trail. From Dingboche, the path to Everest Base Camp and the path to Chola separate at Thukla. that is much less trodden than the one to the base camp.
as you take the steep trail towards Zhongla. You are greeted by a view that can only be described as walking into a painting. The Cho Lake underneath the massive Cho Peak that sits like an unbreachable wall. Solid ice melting into a pool of turquoise water. At 4,380 meters, the lodges of Zhongla feel so isolated that one can literally feel the altitude in the thin air. best time to cross any pass is as early in the morning as possible in order to avoid melting ice ridges that one has to walk on. Chola is a huge block of ice that connects the Everest Base Camp region to the Kokyo Valley. As you approach the pass, the terrain becomes more challenging. climb is physically demanding due to the steep inclines and the thin air. Proper acclimatization and fitness are essential to successfully navigate this part of the journey. Climb below from the top of the 5,400 meter pass is equally challenging. trail then leads to Gokyo Valley, named after the highest freshwater lake system in the world, the Gokyo Lakes. There are six of them, potentially more, 
especially with rising global temperatures. The valley is a breathtaking expanse of the Himalayas, where nature's grandeur unveils its most majestic secrets. Among these towering giants, a hidden gem awaits. A collection of pristine glacial lakes. But the beauty of Gokyo lakes isn't limited to their serene surface. They form vital habitats, supporting a remarkable array of life, adapted to the harsh alpine environment. Feathered residents like the Himalayan snowcock, the migrating ruddy shelduck, and the elusive snow leopard roam these valleys. Making these shores a vital sanctuary for creatures breathing the altitude and frigid temperatures. The lodges of Gokyo are filled with people from every country one can think of. Actually, it's, it's nice. And I also meet last time I do the trick, somebody missed it and then I walked out. <laughs> Dried yak dung is a valuable source of fuel here. The indigenous Sherpa people have long held a deep reverence for these sacred waters. These lakes are not merely geological wonders, but also spiritual reservoirs, steeped in the history and traditions of the Himalayan culture. Pilgrims and trekkers alike pause at these tranquil oases, finding solace and renewal in the serene surroundings. All Gokyo lakes are oligotrophic, meaning they support no life which is why the waters are crystal clear. As climate change looms, the Gokyo lakes stand as sentinels of the Earth's delicate balance. Their existence depends on the glaciers that supply their icy waters. A reminder of the interconnectedness of these high altitude ecosystems. comfort of the lodges here as base, one can explore the other Gokyo lakes through day hikes and visit the base camp to Cho Oyu, the world's sixth highest mountain which towers right behind us.
a different trail connects Gukyo to the lower settlements of Kumjung and Namche. This path is equally blessed. Scattered with nature's jewels that only the Himalayas can offer. The villages of Machermo and Dole act as the connecting dots between Gokyo and Namche. Lake Imja, a significant glacial lake located near Dingboche, is one of countless other lakes in the region. While its raw beauty is undeniable, it holds a looming threat to the surrounding settlements and ecosystems due to rising temperatures throughout planet Earth. Hardly 
ये और लिंस आने As global temperatures increase, Himalayan glaciers experience accelerated melting. And glacial lakes like Imja are growing at an alarming rate. Vast quantities of meltwater accumulating in the lake pose a grave risk of glacial lake outburst floods. These floods occur when the natural dams made of ice or moraine holding back the water give way, releasing massive amounts of water and debris downstream. For settlements all the way to Lukla, the consequences of a glacial lake outburst flood could be catastrophic. The sudden and powerful rush of water and debris could destroy villages, limited agricultural land, and the delicate ecosystem. All thanks to the gradual change to the extreme cold that once existed in these regions. Even outsiders who have been coming here frequently have noticed this change. Oh, my name, Mironam Rusty. Immediate thought that pops into my brain is the changes uh, over the years, mostly since maybe uh, the late 90s. I noticed, uh, used to be able to go trekking. I organized uh, tours, treks, and climbs. It's my job. I like anthropology, but gotta pay the bills. And um, so I've been organizing trips here since the 80s. And we always uh, typically said trekking season was March, April and October, November. It's no longer October. That change started changing in the maybe, you know, it's not a sign, it's my anecdotal recollection that in the 90s I had to start fudging my treks from the first week of October to the second week to the third week. Now we're at certainly third week of October before you can reliably get airplanes, have people go trekking have people go trekking uh, without rain. Now, it, I'm used to October looking like this, but not after sometime in the 90s and certainly the 2000s. This doesn't happen in October except sometimes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, this is fun. Good, it says bakery up here. From the chants that echo through ancient monasteries to the colorful festivals that celebrate life and renewal, the traditions of the Sherpas breathe life into the Himalayan landscape. The monastery in Pangboche is one of the oldest monasteries in the Khumbu region with a history that dates back several centuries. Its origins are believed to be in the 17th century.
Namche Bazaar holds the esteemed title of being the gateway to Everest. It is a melting pot of cultures, attracting trekkers from all corners of the world. The town's vibrancy is evident in its colorful markets, making it the hub of activity and exchange. It serves as a crucial acclimatization stop along the trail for trekkers and mountaineers exploring the colossal mountains surrounding it. Namche came into existence only after the first summit of Everest. As more people started coming here in the quest of ascending the mountain themselves. nearby village of Kungjung, however, has been inhabited for centuries and is the largest of all Sherpa villages. Wandering through the village, the echoes of age-old traditions fill the air. In Kumjung, we find ourselves humbled by the grandeur of the Himalayas and uplifted by the enduring spirit of the people who live here. Here, we also met one of the first female porters of Kumbu, who is now over 80 years of age. <laughs> I <laughs> Namjama <laughs> 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 
Walking through Kumbu, one does not see any vehicles for weeks. <laughs> Helicopters, however, fly frequently. This region is unlike any other in the world. Harboring the highest mountains in the world. of the world gather here, especially during the trekking and mountaineering seasons. Better just to be relaxed yeah. and enjoy the Himalayas. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Vizu, it's very nice seeing you again. Yes. yes. It's yes. unexpected. Yeah. Yes, so, so nice to see you. Maybe the universe yeah. planned it that way for yeah. us. We got yeah, lost for you. the same appreciation of the Himalayas that I do. Yeah. Alaska. Alaska. Alaska, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, I hope yeah. I don't forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a tropical paradise. Oh, yes, we definitely want to visit Alaska someday. Okay, well, <laughs> tropical paradise. you are definitely invited. Come stay with me in Anchorage as long as you like. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Going up to Choyo Base Camp, maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Also, it depends on the weather. Yeah. Right. It's 
can sort of see it a little bit. After right the lake, six? Nine. Yeah, just at like six. Just after lake five. Oh, yeah, apparently the view is spectacular. Yeah, if the sun comes out. But it's looking good. Blue sky there. Yeah. We'll have a nice trip back thank home. Thank you, thank you, you too. Enjoy your trip. As much as the mountains, the people here remain in the memory of anyone who comes here. The simple joys of life and a sense of kinship that modern society has somehow forgotten still endures. Just being here gives rise to a sense of childlike curiosity that the world has left behind. Not only do we hope to share the beauty of this enchanting land, but also the imminent danger that it faces unless we truly understand and embrace the oneness of humanity and nature. A journey through the land of the Sherpas is a physical test and a spiritual pilgrimage, a quest to understand our connection with the grand forces that shape our universe and the enduring human spirit that has brought us to where we now stand in the river of time. <laughs> 